live from the Julia Morgan Ballroom in San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Structure 2015. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are wrapping up two days here at Structure 15, the rebirth of Structure, the second kind of inaugural structure here um, in downtown San Francisco. And we're really excited to be joined by Charles Beeler from Rally Ventures, kind of one of the driving forces to get Structure back. So first off, Charles, welcome back. I don't thanks, think you've been thanks. on since like 2012 Node Summit. I, know, I looked I it up. I missed you guys. So uh, congratulations, on, hey, a, on, congratulations a, on a good event. Congratulations to you all. So, Talk about a little bit about why this event is important to the ecosystem and the community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I so eight years ago, right? You look at where where Ohm started, what what he was trying to do with GigOhm, which was all purely about content. Look at the people, a lot of the Fortune people who were GigOhm, but now are Fortune are here. They're, they were front and center. Was all about quality content. It was getting great people talking about interesting things. The net result of that is you know, today the. CISO from the FBI who spoke yesterday morning, hasn't left the conference for two days. A lot of these conferences, people come, they do their bit, they walk away. Here they stick around because they want to hear what other people have to say. They want to network and meet. And so it was a phenomenal event. The team over the course of eight years that built it did an incredible job. And it was really, I mean, everyone was disappointed when it went away. So you know, we had an opportunity to help a little bit with Claire, Tom, and, and Derek and the whole team. Uh, but really, I just, it's been so much fun to see what they got done here and to see the quality of exactly, exactly what we hope to see, that quality of content. For us, for early stage enterprise investors, as you know, it, this is right up our power alley. It, what an awesome place to get to hang out for two days. So it, I'm thrilled it worked out. I'm thrilled Structure's back. Got a long, long ways to run now. And, and I think everyone you know, who's been part of GigaOM for those eight years should be incredibly proud of themselves for what they built and the fact that it really does have this kind of compelling staying power. Yeah, well thanks for inviting us too. Uh, I don't think you've ever been at a prior structure event, so no, we're really excited No, I'm glad this will be a new addition, hopefully for all of them would be my goal. I mean, you guys have been great at Node Summit, but it's, it's the same kind of thing, right? I mean, it's what you're trying to do, getting interesting people, sitting in front of the mic, having quick conversations. It's, it's the content that makes this stuff compelling. There are plenty of tech conferences, we all go to them, we all sit in here what vendors have to say. It's really taking those, those clear, lucid moments of, of true insight that someone like I can go and deal with, someone like you can follow up on and dig in. So, oh, it's great. I mean, it's a perfect fit for the for you all with structure, right? So. Yeah, we were psyched, and it's, we were joking internally when we looked at the guest list and and who we would have on. I mean, it's just basically a parade yeah. of founders and CEOs, which is what we really love to have because they're the they're, they they provide the insight, and you know, people want to hear from them. Who's inventing the technology? Who's building the companies around the technology? And then, like you said, the FBI, who's actually putting the technology to place in the marketplace? So we were psyched. Actually, a ton of Cube alumni were here, yeah. so well, you know, it's funny that community. your audience can't see it, but the hallway right behind the camera is where all these speakers are walking. They sort of stop and they look over and they wave and they they look at their watches to ask what time they get to come on the cube. It's it's been fun to watch. Yeah, it's great. We we, we have a really active community and and we're psyched. So, just share some of the insights. So, any any uh, kind of breakthrough things that you heard this over the last couple of days that you weren't expecting? Uh, anything that was particularly prudent or you know, kind of hard hitting? Yeah, you know, the thing I heard that, w that I was pleased to hear, I wasn't sure I would, everyone's talking about containers. I was expecting to hear just a tremendous amount of hype, just container, container, container. A lot of people talking about it, but a lot of realism about where, like Brian Cantrell's talk today, I thought, uh, I mean, really frankly, all the people went through, Jason Hoffman was up there talking about, here's where we really stand today. It's kind of the history of containers. Here's where we stand today. Here's where the opportunities are, but here's the reality of what still needs to be done. I think there's phenomenally compelling opportunity there, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And, and oversimplifying that as a traditional startup VC thing where it's going to be hot, it's going to be this year, it's going to be next. It was refreshing to kind of hear people who are really dealing with it sit there and talk about that as an issue. And then the other thing for me, and it's close to our heart because we're fat, we, we love security, love security companies, was the amount of conversation around not security as kind of the afterthought or the end thought, but security through that whole framework. And going back to Arlette, the CISO from the FBI and others who've been here, I mean, the, the original CISO for Amazon is here as an attendee. You know, it just came to hear what people had to say, right. came into town. It's pretty interesting when you get a chance to talk to those people and say, well, what do you think? And they walk through how they think about these frameworks. So to me, it was really refreshing to see that conversation happening on stage. And you guys just bang it out. I mean, it's like talk after talk after talk they're after doing, talk after I mean, talk, a panel of uh, chat, a panel of chat, 20, a panel of chat. Yeah. Um, if it's great content, people want more, and if it's not great content, you only have to listen for a few more minutes, they yeah, put you on right. stage. Yeah, and so. they're hanging out. So it's interesting though, you talk about kind of the hype cycle and, and what happened with Docker, and we were at DockerCon last summer, and, you know, and it was just raging. It's, it's kind of 
might calm down, and, and obviously everyone always talks about Moore's Law, but the one I don't think ever gets enough plug is Amara's Law, which is, you know, it's way hyped at the beginning, and then it kind of falls off, but we completely underestimate yeah. what's going to happen just down the road, and as, as you really sit back and think what we now do with our mobile phones, and that's a primary interaction between a lot of enterprises yep. and their customers, I mean, the, the future is bright, and, and the accelerant on um, the, the core course power, the storage capacity, the networking capacity, SDN, I mean, Lord knows what this thing's going to look like in three, four, five years. Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I think, I mean, I, not to say, I think the container sort of revolution, evolution, whatever it's going to be, it is a hugely compelling one, and, and the, the excitement and energy around DockerCon and things is, is what's going to draw more people in and help improve and fix the thing that needs to be fixed. But yeah, you listen to Facebook announcing today. Last year it was, hey, we're at 40 gig, now it's 100. I mean, the, and I don't know, the, the, the solar powered plane staying in the air for three months doing laser-based optics for, you know, for internet connections in countries where they can't get it. This is, this is really science fiction stuff from just a few years ago. Yeah. So it's, it's really amazing and kind of where these companies, those types of businesses are pushing the boundaries and it just opens up so many new worlds of opportunity. The more compute you get, the faster you can process this data, the faster you can push it around. It, it, it opens every day a new idea, a new opportunity that I wish I were the person who thought of and I never will be. <laughs> Hopefully I get to find a couple of them, but it's, it's really fun to see the people who actually are thinking of those ideas. Yeah, it's, it's great. I always think of the poor guy that's got to think of the cool gadgets for the next Bond movie. That would oh very, be a very difficult Yeah, and uh, trying to job. actually stay ahead of reality <laughs> these days. We, we were at the HP Enterprise lunch today. Right, so what you'd expect that the whole conversation is going to be on HP and we split and we're doing all this great thing. The entire conversation at the car, which was a massive debate, was how soon are we all going to get to have a driverless vehicle and what form will it take and what's the most likely winner of it. Right. And the whole conversation was led by one of the senior execs at HP. He said, we can talk about HP whenever you want, but let's talk about this. I mean, it's, it's fun to be around a community of people who get excited right. about those things and actually have some really intelligent thoughts and ideas around them. I heard it's the next uh, Tesla download that should be on your car in about three weeks well, from it, now. Yeah, in all honesty, here's what I'm <laughs> waiting for. That's what's going to happen, right? It's here's a, what, here's what I'm waiting update. for. I'm waiting for the engineer that buys the Tesla, goes home, hacks his own Tesla, uploads their own software, his or her own software, to put in their own self-driving algorithms, and without anyone knowing it, starts operating the first personal self-driving vehicle. It might not be great software, but you know people are writing this at home all the time, and if you have all the sensors around the car, why wait for the laws, why wait for the car companies? Someone's going to go do it. Yeah, that's a good point. And we'll probably find out when they rear end someone else in Mountain View, <laughs> but that'll be. <laughs> so, before we go, let's go grab the reception again. Great couple days. Um, for people that don't know Rally, what, what are Absolutely. you guys all about? What are you investing in? What are you looking at? What the, let people know kind of what yeah, you guys so are Yeah, so Rally Ventures, early stage, enterprise only focus. It's what I've done 17 years. My partner Jeff's done for 17 years. Uh, it, it's, it's what we know. We love consumer. We're just not good at investing in it. So don't take our money if you're a consumer company. Uh, we like hard technology. We like the big challenges. Sa SaaS is fantastic. We do plenty of it. We really like the people can come in with a complex problem with a real solution that solves you know, significant issues that people are having. Uh, we are you know, investing out of sort of series of $100 million funds. And for us, we, we're early stage, we love working with companies, but we're small firms. So what we've tried to do is not just have the power of the firm, but really, frankly, the power of the network. So our, our investors are mostly institutional investors, but 20% of our money comes from 90 individual investors who, who really cover all the different aspects of the technology sectors where we focus. And we've got currently seven public company CEOs and across the tech partners, I think 30 different public CEOs at one time or another. People who founded companies from zero to billions of dollars. Entrepreneurs, technologists, HR, finance. And so the goal with this is say, look, we're not dumb. We've done this a long time. We can help your company. But if you really need help on an HR issue or a finance issue or a sales and go-to-market issue, I'll tell you what I know, but let's go get the three people who really know because they've done it in your market. They're investors in our fund. They have a vested interest in the success of the business. Let's go see what they have to say. Right, right. And, and it's, it's, we've been doing this for three years. It's been massively rewarding. 40% of our investments have actually come from that group and we've had more than 100% coverage, about seven tech partners involved in every one of the companies. And so it's really been great to be able to work with these companies and work with that group of tech partners. I think we have about 15 of them signed up and came to the event, which was, was also pretty fun to see. Oh, terrific. All right, so if you have a great idea, you want to change the world in the enterprise space. There's really only one firm. Give Charles too. a call. And uh, again, so Charles right Bueller from Rally Ventures, congratulations on the event. Thanks hey, for keeping the structure alive. The community and, is really excited. And we forgot to mention that 
We were classmates back in the That's 90s, right. so we've been doing this for a long time, the drinking part at least, the interview part is somewhat new. <laughs> well, I don't know, go Quaker, so big shout out to Wharton. I'm actually going to a Wharton event later this evening for they, uh, the incoming class. They don't invite me I don't anymore. even know what they're coming. All right. Cheers. Cheers. All right, Jeff Rick signing off from two days at Structure uh, 15 at the Julie Morgan Ballroom in downtown San Francisco. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.